When it's time to start working on your PMI application to take the PMP exam, you'll do this on the PMI.org website. And what they're going to be looking for is a minimum of 36 months of non-overlapping project management experience. They used to be also looking for 4,500 hours of project experience, but that's no longer uh, part of the requirements. Now it's just the calendar months of experience. So your project experience can extend back no more than eight years. And again, it needs to be non-overlapping. If you don't have a four-year college degree, they're going to be looking for 60 months instead of 36 months. In the graphic here, I've shown uh, Project Q and Project R, where Project R has a portion which is overlapping, and it's only the non-overlapping portion, which I've labeled R prime. Uh, it's only those months that you can count as you add up all the months to look for 36 months of non-overlapping experience. And what do we mean by project management experience? Well, what it says in the PMP handbook is leading and directing the project. So it's not just being an individual contributor. It's actually leading and coordinating at least some portion of the project. It doesn't mean you need to be officially called a project manager, but you need to be doing that type of work. All right, so as you start working on your application, I suggest you start with a very simple template and just write out the project name, the start date, the end date, the uh, months of calendar duration, and be sure you focus in on the non-overlapping months of calendar duration, and list out the projects until you see all the experience you're looking for, and and maybe get 10% more, but, but don't go overboard. Just, just meet the minimums plus a little bit. And, and once you have this all worked out so you can see where it is coming from, then you can start working on the application itself. And in the application itself, you'll see these various headers that you need to uh, complete, uh, project title, organization, job title, and so forth. And then you get down to the project description and they, they say 200 to 500 words. My recommendation is aim for about 300 words plus or minus 50. You want uh, enough words to tell a really good compelling story, but you don't want it to be too long. Sometimes less is more. In your project description, you want to include a, a purpose, high level, what was this project intended to accomplish? And then what did you do specifically in say something in each of these process groups, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and control, and closing. And then finally, a brief uh, summary of, of project outcome. Was it viewed as a success or was it canceled? Whatever the case might be. And in your description, you want to not make it look really generic. You want to talk about stuff which is really unique and specific to the project. And as you describe multiple projects, you want to make each unique and different. You don't want to use generic language and, and cut and paste it across all the different projects. You really want each project to look unique and you want to tell a specific enough story so that it really resonates with the reviewer and they can almost picture themselves being there um, understanding the different work that was done. So it, I'm showing an example here just a, a, an example, but you'll notice in execution I talked about troubleshooting a very specific component. Um, so some really specific stuff unique to the project, slip it in there to, to keep it looking real. And as I say, avoid really generic language like develop project charter, establish scope. That's way too generic. It needs to be more specific than that. It needs to look real. 